All right, what's up everyone? I haven't really introduced you to the uh, slightly douched Raptor, the SDR. Um, it's, uh, it's okay, um, but I wanna share it with you. I'm gonna change the oil here, so I figured I'd just set the camera and tell you what I'm thinking with this and tell you my, uh, my methodology here and the folly that I, I got suckered into. Um, it was right down the street and, um, and uh, you know, it, it has a lift on it, which is like Raptor no-no. Do not lift a Raptor. It's like everybody knows that you don't do that. So it has a, a four inch BDS suspension. But it's about to get dark and it's kind of rainy. So let me just hand, hand hold the camera. I'll walk around, show you what it is, and then we'll get to change the oil and I'll tell you why I'm making this video and just kind of wanted to do a, do a wrench and chat or whatever you call it. Wrench and rant. First thing you'll notice, which I'm not in love with, I thought I would have been a lot more love with them. I think once I paint the calipers and paint the uh, paint the hub, um, that uh, that it'll look better. But these are um, 18 by 8 plus one offset uh, TE37. I think they're I don't know if they're RTs, but Volk Volk TE37s. Uh, and then I finally got a hold of some tires. I was waiting forever. These are Falcon Wild Peaks, which actually turned out to be great. The, the truck had mud terrains had a Mickey Thompson Baja whatever bro uh, mud terrain on it, which was terrible. And it had a plus, I don't know, I think it was a minus 40 offset. So they were bro does or douched out, you know, sticking out. And I knew that I would swap those really quickly. Um, the question was, you know, what does the truck look like with proper offsets lifted? Uh, because, because this has a, uh, this has a BDS four inch like really cheap you know suspension four inch lift kit if you will uh and so now we're flush we're fender flush you can see it's raining out here so i need to uh need to hurry this up i did a roll and lock bed cover which is pretty sweet uh, it has some crappy window tint which we'll swap out and change here uh shortly but the um the the changeover to proper flush mounted um, wheels has made a, made a pretty significant difference. It does have amp research steps on it. So it had some stuff on it that I would have done. And so that's why I bought it. It was literally, the truck was literally right down the street. So the amp research steps are good. Um, the problem is, is now that it's lifted with the, these are 37 by 12 and a half, the tires, um, it just looks weird. And you know, this front bumper is you know, ADD is a great company, makes great products, but, you know, if I had a choice, I wouldn't have the, uh, the ADD front bumper on the thing. Uh, and then the rigid lights were flickering, and it has a worn winch and stuff on it, but it has the intercooler mount, uh, or the intercooler change, and the speed sensor, ch um, the adaptive cruise control, adapt the, the change, uh, so they changed that over, relocated, I guess you'd call it, um, but the truck from certain angles looks really great. You know, from this angle, it looks kind of cool. Um, you know, again, you kind of ruin a Raptor when you lift it. But is that a dent in the door? No, I think it's just dirty. So I haven't detailed it. I haven't done anything to it um, other than we put the roll and lock. Let me see, is it still raining out here? Yeah, let me just show you the roll and lock real quick, real quickly. So when you, when you go to open it, it's locked. So the bed cover is motorized and then you have the little leash that you grab and you just pull it. And it has a few different lock positions, but uh, Michelle really likes that. So I think that's pretty sweet to have that. But this is, um, what did I say? I thought I said it was lead foot originally, but it's not. This is uh, magnetic. Same color as my GT350, I should have known that. The nice thing about magnetic is that the fender flares match, so you don't really have to paint them. Where I always paint them on like, like my blue one that I had, and you know, some of the other, you know, the, the, uh, the, the white one, the white one that we had, the Gen 1 was painted, Charles did that. So let me put this back on the tripod. So anyway, I hope I can shoot. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to put the, the, the hood up 
but hopefully I can. So it doesn't fit with the Swiss tracks. That extra three quarters of an inch made it so that I can't, I can't fit it in here. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't reach anymore. Or I can't, I can't pull the truck even, even halfway in like I did before. Where's the darn latch on this thing? I forget. There it is. Let's see if this can make it up. Nope. Let me put a towel there. Put a towel here to keep it from hitting. Let me get a big cushy towel. Actually, what will work best here is if I just do an Incredipad. So, I should do this at the garage, but I'm here. I got the camera here. Michelle drives this thing all over the darn place, so. I'll just set that there. Okay, that's good. There's all kinds of janky wiring. So there's a shop here in town that uh, did all this stuff for the previous owner. And this is pretty, you know, pretty typical, you know, Lake County, Florida, bro dozer mode. You take a Raptor and then they just put the same stuff on a Raptor that they did on, a, on all the other trucks, the normal F-250s and stuff that they do. BDS suspension, big, bulky, heavy. I bet you, I bet you we could drop, I bet you this bumper is six, seven hundred pounds. I bet you we could drop this off. We did like an SVC front bumper or the, a different version of the ADD. Um, get rid of the winch, which we're never going to use. Um, maybe I'll reuse the winch somehow. Uh, but all the lighting's kind of kind of wonky done on here, so uh, I'm going to redo all that stuff. But you know, essentially, what happened is, you know, Michelle went to Clearwater, and the I just I just had before that even happened. I just had a feeling. I just felt like the the Gen One. Well, let's do some work here while we're, while we're talking. The Gen 1 is on its last leg, uh, for me anyway, because Michelle just gets in the truck, she drives it. We don't, she doesn't do, she's not doing maintenance and stuff like that. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, watching it like I used to and taking care of it and detailing it and washing it and all that stuff. And so I, um, I just had a feeling it's, you know, it hit like, what was it at? A hundred something thousand miles. And, uh, it, 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 the truck would go to 200. If somebody, if, if it was me driving the truck and I maintained it, um, it would be, it'd be fine. You know, I could, could have just kept the thing going. It just needed a couple of updates. Um, just needed some general maintenance, diff fluid, stuff like that, alignment, things like that just needed to get done. And, you know, I, I just, I just don't want a high mileage car for her because I don't want to have to, you know, I don't have to deal with it. So she took it to, Clear, uh, not Clearwater, Destin, which is four and a half, five hours away. The hub had problems. Like the, I think, um, I think Rex worked on it and I don't know if maybe the hub was just failing from torquing the nuts down, but a couple of nuts failed uh, and then five lugs failed and there was one lug left over. Uh, so the, um, the, uh, why is it escaping me? The threaded rods in there, it'll come to me in a second, uh, were snapping off, shearing off. Uh, and so, and it was a weekend on a Sunday and they're in Destin and they couldn't get the parts they needed. Ended up, Pet Boys came to the rescue and put a new hub on the thing. And then just total happenstance, the, um, the fuel pump thingy that's in the back of Raptors, the fuel pump um, relay, um, also went out. So she started driving home and the car went into limp mode and it wouldn't turn on on the side of the highway. So an OG follower went and picked it up. But while this is all happening, I'm like, I need to get a new truck right now. I just don't want to deal with it. Uh, and there was this one that was lifted that had the Amprey search steps, the windows were tinted, it had 6,000 miles on it. It was literally a half a mile down the road or from, from, from OGHQ, a mile down the road. And had an ADD front bumper, and they already cut the frame horns and redid the, you know, it has the ADD uh, intercooler, and it doesn't have a tune, but it has um, it has a bunch of cool stuff on it. Um, now, it had the bro dozer wheels, the um, the fuel wheels on it, and had, you know, wrong offsets and things like that. But um, I thought, you know, well, let's try a lifted Raptor. Worst case, 
you know, it's slightly douched, we can de-douche it, and then it'll give me something to work on. It'll be a video series in the future. But, you know, I went and drove the thing, and it drove great, and, um, and I knew that I would get some proper size wheels and tires and stuff like that. And so, you know, I, t- so I think I paid 79 grand for this thing. So I paid over sticker what it was new, which was stupid, or right at sticker when it was new, something like that, within a few hundred bucks. And, um, and I got all the... He, the dude spent 15 grand to make it look like this minus minus the TE37. So I got TE37s on it, and um, I got to do the first oil change here. She's already put 11,000 miles on that thing, so I had it for a few months. But uh, I'm telling you, F-150 extended cab, especially a Raptor, because Raptors are so great on the street. Um, it's, I think, the best, if you can stomach the fuel expense, uh, it's, it's the best family vehicle. Especially if you put a bed cover on it, um, they've got tons of room in the back, uh, and the kids can space out. They can, they can't, they don't kick the front seats. You can put the seat all the way back in the front. It's just a great family vehicle, and these things are super reliable. Uh, when I first got it, they, um, we actually found that the, uh, the there was a leak. There's water leaking down the A pillar, and I think what happened is I don't think the previous owner ever opened the sunroof. As soon as the factory seal for the sunroof broke, uh, then it started leaking. Because there's no way that the, the truck, you know, that, the, that um, they wouldn't have fixed that or wouldn't have found that. So it's leaking down the A-pillar. And so I had to put a drain line on the, on the um, I tried to get warranty, tried to get them to schedule it. I told them exactly what it was, and Ford wouldn't, wouldn't fix it. They're like, you need to bring it in and drop it off. Our guys need to diagnose it. I'm like, no, no, I'm telling you. Here's the part number. If you don't believe me, I'll pay for the part. I just don't want to bring the truck there, have it sit there for two weeks while you're waiting on the part to show up. It did take two weeks for the part to show up. And then I just said, screw it. I'm just going to do it myself. And so we fixed it and haven't had any leaks since. So that's, that's really the only issue of any Raptor I've had other than the you know, hub. And again, I understand the problems that we had were very preventative, very simple to fix. Um, but I just knew, I can just feel it. These things are going to start coming down the pike where it was going to have all kinds of problems. The Raptor, especially since I don't maintain it as well as I want, I'd rather get one of these, have her drive it for three or four years, and just get another one. And, and let somebody else love on the thing, bring it back to spec, and make it really nice. Uh, and so that's, that's, that's been sort of the standard practice of what I'm going to do. If we keep doing Raptors, unless they come up with some really cool electric truck i don't think the lightning is the way to go if they made a uh, an electric version of a raptor i'd be all over it so anyway that's the raptor story so i got uh oh shoot i got a meeting that i'm already late on all right sorry i forgot i had a meeting about uh working on developing an obsessed garage app for inside the hex wouldn't that be sick all right, so I had to go to the store, and you're seeing this. You know, I talked about this reserve your spot thing. Um, supply chain issues, man. We're having some real problems and many things. So there was no, I couldn't find a Ford filter, so I had to buy a Mobile One filter, which I always like to use OE filters for, for things. Um, and then I usually prefer to do Amsoil, but I didn't have any uh, 5W30 on me, so we're just doing uh, Mobile One. Just keep it, keep it really simple. Let me go in and out of focus here. Um, so we got six quarts filter, and uh, I don't need to put the truck up in the air or anything. I just slide underneath it and hope I don't make a big mess in my Swiss tracks. Well, here's what I'm thinking. This is why I wanted to make this video for you. Where is the oil cap on this thing? I'm gonna need a step stool. Gee whiz. So, never, never had a lifted truck before. You know, we always do the collars, you know, the get it up a two and a quarter inch, just the leveling kit. But uh, this is, a, I think, a four inch lift. So I need a step stool to get up onto this thing. But the, um, I'm going to be detailing this thing here pretty soon. What the heck is the gas can? Oh, oil cap's on the other side. I think it's on. It's been a while since I messed with my Gen 2. Remember I had the blue Gen 2, the lightning blue Gen 2? Um, that I gave Michelle the choice to take the Gen 2 or the Gen 1, and she wanted to keep the Gen 1. She's sad that this doesn't have the V8 rumble. Um, yeah, there we go. That's interesting. The tiny little 
I don't know that I ever even changed the oil on my Gen 2. I'm not sure I did. Let's go back and look at the archives. Is there a dipstick on this? Dipstick, anybody? Yeah. Let's stick right here. Ugh. I don't know why I pulled this stuff out, but I think it helps vent better. So, again, I told you the story of buying this Gen 2. Um, I won a Gen 3 for Michelle. An un unmodified Gen 3 is what I keep telling myself I want. Gosh, it's been a while since I had to video this stuff myself. Where's my oil filter kit? It's in here somewhere. So the plan is to do this. Tell me what you think. There it is. The oil filter thingy. Is... You know, I want to de-douche this Raptor, so I want to take the lift off of it, and I want to do RPG Stage 3 rear. I think I want to do the SVC. Um, or I might just do full SVC. I've never done that before, but SVC mid-travel kit, which is supposedly amazing on the street. Um, so I've been thinking about... I bought this and this was supposed to be temporary until I got a Gen 3, but I didn't want to pay over for it. I didn't want to do the dance. I just wanted to get one. And I wanted to get one in short order uh, or get one whenever, whenever I could get it, not have to try to get it in such short order. And so I bought this Gen 2 with some modifications to it so I wouldn't have to do a bunch of stuff. And Michelle would put some miles on it and then I would sell this one or trade it in is what I would do and uh and go go through that process but i've been thinking what if we did this so we take our slightly douched raptor slightly less douchey because i have proper wheels and tires on it so what if we take us the slightly douched version and uh we make it awesome do rpg stage three svc mid travel better front bumper maybe king shocks change the window tint um uh, do a tune um, just, you know, obviously paint correct it, detail it, do, uh, uh I was planning on doing a G Technic Crystal Serum Ultra, Crystal Serum Ultra on this, uh, which I can get because technically I'm certified, even though I don't have a, a dealership. I can only get it for myself occasionally, um, but I can't, you know, we can't sell it because it's pro only. Um, it helps buying, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of uh, G Technic to, to get, uh, get a bottle of it, but keep that between us. Um, and why don't we do a giveaway? Shelly, what do you think? What do you think about this? I get you the new Gen 3, which my buddy Sean Grower says is like the most amazing truck he's ever driven. And he's had one of these. So he got the Gen 3. It sounds better. It's faster. It already has 37s. It wouldn't be lifted like this. It drives like a gosh darn dream. It has better audio, better tech better fuel economy yeah it looks even better than this one tougher or better well i can make it look tough really easily so what if we did a og deducing build not a crazy raptor but just make it like a really nice raptor and do a giveaway i was thinking we do that from january january 15th to the end of february so we do a 45 day giveaway like we normally do i just have to get some product to be able to you know, to sell the, the, the giveaway stuff uh, what do you think and just, so i take this and uh, i probably get another set of bronze i think this needed bronze tees uh, and if I do the mid-travel, I would also probably do the uh, SVC uh, carbon fiber front and rear um, uh, fenders. The widened fenders go with a wider track. Uh, so I think that would be like a plus offset, I think. I can't remember. Is it plus or negative? Plus or minus? I forget what moves it out on this truck. I think it's a, yeah, I think it'd be a plus, like a plus 20 offset. So you go with that wider sort of track with the wider fenders. Just make the thing super tough. Um, and then get the lighting on point, get the lighting all set up, get the winch uh, removed and a big heavy bumper removed. Um, I think it could be a really cool giveaway, don't you? Let's, let's, uh, let's keep working on this. So, I need, I need organization is what I need. I need to get all of this stuff organized. Uh, what is the, uh, the bolt on this thing? Is it a uh, 17 mil? I've got stuff 
that I got. I gotta organize all of this stuff. So 21, 22, Let's see if it's a 17. I think it's a 17. We'll just use one of these fancy ones. We're gonna need lots of paper towels and we're gonna need a funnel. And I need to try to not make a mess on a brand new floor. But if we do make a mess, all we have to do is pop the tile up and wipe it up. I forgot to get a tile popper. I should have brought one with me. It's probably a 15 millimeter bolt, a drain bolt. And I normally like to swap the drain bolt and I like to double funnel this. So don't you think a giveaway would be freaking awesome? Gosh, this garage looks so good, especially on camera. I've been working hard on this thing. It looks awesome. This is like signature old school OG with a couple of new, new twists with the, uh, the limestone backsplash and all that. Oh, gotta put this in my pocket. Microphone. Do I have to take this panel off? Oh, shit. Please tell me I don't. Where's the darn oil filter? Oh, no, why is my phone ringing? I don't remember where the oil filter is on the Gen 2. So I'm automatically thinking Gen 1. Yeah, the Gen 1 is right. anything is. I don't think I ever changed the oil on mine. I don't know why I had to have. <clears throat> Am I gonna have to consult YouTube? Here's the pan. Where's the darn drain? Oh, drain bolts right here. Okay. I'm gonna have to look it up. I, was, I think this plate is blocking me. Above uh -huh. it, it's horizontally uh, in there. You'll see in just a sec. Okay. So we can figure out where this thing is. Yeah. And I don't think it's a 17 mil. I don't know. It's gotta be underneath this plate. The engine's not here. Where is that freaking plate? There it is, no wonder I couldn't see it. There it is, I'm an idiot. There's the filter, but with all this relocated stuff, I don't think I can just take this plate off. But where does the darn oil go to? It's just gonna run. That's because of this BDS bull crap. Shoot. That's why. This whole cross member, this aftermarket right here, this thing. So now when I take the oil filter out, the oil's just gonna run all over the place. That's what happens when you buy janky crap. I don't, I can't even see the plate from here. Oh, there it is, okay. I see. This is gonna come out this little drain spot right here. Okay, cool. And it's gonna end up hitting this cross member. We'll figure that out. We'll just put the pan under here and I'll be able to take care of that. Okay, cool, not that bad. So now I need to get a 15, I think is what it is. Oh, the BDS system changes what it looks like under here. And so there is no plate. I wonder I couldn't find it. Okay. So the oil pan's way up here. I'm gonna make a freaking mess. I really need to do this on my lift. <laughs> The trunk is nice, but it's still not quite tall enough for me to move around like I'd like. So that sucker's gonna make a huge mess. Let's just try not to get into my eyeballs. Oh, that's a that's a freaking hand buster. I knew it. So how do I want to do this? Take this thing, pull it up here. We're gonna make a huge freaking mess. Not too bad. That sure is running out pretty slowly. Okay, now we're gonna have to let that drain for a while. And we're good. So I'm gonna let that drain for a little while and come back to you. There we go, all right. So it's been draining out here. Let me get some brake cleaner. Let's use a little brake cleaner, clean off the underside of the truck. 
I mean, you always want to take the oil filter out first, but I only have one oil pan here. So I'm going to put the plug back in first and the oil filter second. A couple of Matty Uggas. Let's do a little bit of this. So I don't drip any oil in my driveway. Let's clean off the sway bar here. So yeah, what do you think, man? I think the problem is I'm going to build this Raptor, make it way cool, and I'm not going to want to, I want to see it go, and I don't really want to do another one, but that's fine. That's what we do. So there's our drain spot right there. So I need to make sure that this goes right here. So now let's take the oil filter off. <clears throat> But I can't get at it from the bottom. I gotta get at it from the top here. Which makes it more difficult. What a pain. <clears throat> Dang it. Alright, I'll be back when I figure this out. Alright, hats off, hands are jacked. Um they just put the filter on too tight. It's the wrong freaking filter too. I hope I got the right size filter. So here's the mangled mess. I'm trying to get that thing off. What I needed was a socket. It's just too, too tight. So it took me like 45 minutes, maybe an hour to get that thing off of there. Not a fun, ex pleasant experience. So I'm gonna screw this other filter on, put a little oil in the gasket. I'm not gonna put any in here, which I know is not preferred, but I don't care. I don't wanna dump it all over the place. And I took the entire intake out. There we go, nice, comfy, hand tight. Hand tight is all we need. I'm doing any more. What a nightmare. What am I thinking? I'm gonna get into doing some big project. That's what I need Mike for. If Mike was here, it'd be all easy. All right, oil filter's on. Six quarts of oil. Put this thing back together. So what do you think? Should we do a giveaway? I don't know. I, turned, I somehow managed to turn a 10 minute project into a two hour ordeal, tearing the entire truck apart. So anyway, that's a wrap for tonight. Sorry, I'm gonna turn on something and make me happy and relax, go eat some dinner. Thanks for watching, see you soon. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, to the floor, to the floor.